WCIA3 forecast first, sponsored by CIBM Bank. And good morning, meteorologist Adam Sherwinski here taking a look outside at Decatur. Not much happening right now. We have had some snowflakes, though, out towards western portions of our viewing area. You can see that here starting to push on in very light in nature as it moves closer and closer to central Illinois. Starting to see a little bit of that convert over into some rain, too. So it's starting to become more of that snow turning into rain to wintry mix as well as the day progresses. But very light smattering of snowfall here. Better chance for snow up to the north in northern Illinois, not too far from Galena and towards Rockford as well. And you can see on the other side of Des Moines, we're seeing some rain move in. Yeah, we'll see that turning over into rain later on this afternoon. 27 in Champaign, 29 in Decatur, 31 in Springfield. Temperatures, as they keep rising, will help get rid of some of the snow chances and replace them with rain and wintry mix chances. Winds are picking up as well. That's what's going to boost our temperatures for today, despite the cloud cover already moving back in. But man, it is bringing in some cold wind chills still for this morning. 9 in Pontiac, 10 in Watsika, and 12 in Champaign for this morning. So our headlines for today, flakes, rain, wintry mix, all of the above for this weekend. We'll see a wet pattern continue itself through the weekend, colder by next week. How cold will we get? Well, I'll let you know coming up in just a bit. But first, the 9 o'clock hour starts with Matthew and Karina. Alrighty, Adam, thank you, and you at home for joining us. I'm Matthew White. And I'm Karina Rubio. We have a lot in store for you in the next hour of the morning show, but first, here's a look at your eye-opener. There's a rise in fake W-2s, what you need to know about the tax season scam. Plus, we are celebrating Champaign County Restaurant Week. We'll tell you what's on one chef's menu to kick things off. And would you spend over $100 on a cup of coffee? We'll tell you about that in our trending topics of the day. All that and more in store for you on The Morning Show, which starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is The Morning Show on WCIA 3 News. If someone's used your identity to file their tax return, it's a very long process. A process that could delay your tax refund up to a year because scammers using fake W-2s are on the rise. And with tax season beginning this week, you may be getting your W-2 in the mail. However, other people are creating their own, claiming to work for a company, making up numbers and faking an ID. The owner of Jackson Hewitt in Champaign says this year is a bit unusual because they're seeing more fake W-2s right now earlier in the season. Yolanda Stark says it's hard to say one specific reason it's happening more than ever. She also believes it could be because of COVID-19 stimulus programs, lower refunds, or just the economy. But she says tax preparers are trained to look for issues, but other people should be aware of identity theft and take precautions. Make sure you're keeping your social security numbers and your birth dates, you know, under lock and key. You also want to be careful with your tax preparer. You want to make sure that you're using a professional that takes your security very seriously. So she went on to say that a lot of the forms they've seen at Jackson Hewitt have the correct workplace, but the money earned is forged. And for scammers, the consequences can be severe, and it could even lead up to about $100,000 in penalties or jail time. Some good news about employment in Illinois. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says jobs are up in the state. They say the unemployment rate decreased in most areas in December. The Bureau says some industries saw job growth, including manufacturing, leisure and hospitality, construction and education. Well, the state of Illinois just officially paid off the rest of its pandemic unemployment debt. The state had to borrow over $4 billion from the federal government during the pandemic that was meant to ensure the state had enough money to pay unemployment insurance benefits. Well, Comptroller Susanna Mendoza says she's been preparing for this moment for a while. I've been setting aside money to be able to pay the $1.37 billion on day one, stopping the interest for Illinois taxpayers, and that's another thing I'm very proud of. Now, a law that the governor signed also sets aside $450 million for the state's trust fund. A Champaign County jury found a 22-year-old woman guilty of first-degree murder. Ariana Colbert shot and killed 19-year-old Akari Ingram Triner of Rantoul in 2021. It happened near Kenwood Road and White Street in Champaign. Police say there was an argument in the apartment complex courtyard and shots were fired. A bullet hit Ingram Triner in the neck. Colbert will be sentenced in March. A former U of I employee has been arrested. Police say 60-year-old Rebecca Nash made six personal purchases on her university-owned credit card last year. Police say most of those charges were rental cars. Others were made at gas stations and convenience stores. Police say the cars rented were done without authorization. Nash has paid off two of those charges, but the remaining ones are still worth more than $10,000. 
Well, we have learned that a person has been sent to the hospital after an apartment fire. This happened last night on Champaign Avenue between North 21st and North 22nd Streets in Mattoon. Crews arrived to smoke coming from the second floor, and then there were people who were treated for smoke inhalation. Investigators say this fire started because of careless use of smoking materials. But we're going to take a quick break from the news and check in with Adam for the weather. Uh, Adam, it is the weekend, but it might be a good one just to stay indoors if you can. Well, I was already planning to do that anyway <laughs> here, guys, despite the weather. I mean, I don't have a lot of plans going on this weekend, but let's take a look outside right now here. And so far, it's been a little sunny here for parts of the region. That cloud cover has really moved right back in over the last hour or so. Starting to see a few spots of snow showers out there, so don't be surprised if you see that heading out the door for this morning. Starting to see some of the lighter bands push on through and a little bit of conversion over into some wet weather, too, as well with it. So we'll start to see that snow give way to wintry mix and then even some rainfall as Temperatures increase here over the next couple of hours. You can already see that happening out towards our west there in places like Iowa. You can see on the other side of Des Moines, a little bit more rain in the wintry mix, even some freezing rain, brief freezing rain here, and some snow on the other side. So you can kind of see the dichotomy of the, the system right there and the warmer temperatures right behind it. They're actually warmer out there to the west than we were this morning here in central Illinois. A lot of it's because of the clear skies, but still... See more of the snow stay up towards Wisconsin and northern Illinois, where they do have some winter storm or uh, winter weather advisories up there. Excuse me. 26 in Danville, 27 in Champaign, 24 in Watsika, and 31 in Taylorville. So starting to warm up here, get closer to that freezing mark. And we'll exceed that later on today. Winds from the south helping to boost our temperatures later on today, but right now giving us some cold wind chills here across the area. Man, it is still chilly out there for this morning. Let's take a look at the three-day forecast. And with the three-day forecast, you'll notice that we have temperatures warm up into the 40s yet again for tomorrow. And then we're back into the 30s for Sunday. Late Saturday going into Sunday, we'll start seeing rain turn back to wintry mix. To snow, that's the opposite of what we're going to see for today. And even some snowflakes as well. So we'll see even some freezing rain potential out there as well. That can make travel a little hazardous going from Saturday into Sunday. Some icy roads potentially out there. We'll have to wait and see. You know, this morning was probably the longest yet this season that I had to sit in my car and wait for that windshield to defrost. So just know that if you still got to head out the door. You know, I got a workout just scraping <laughs> off the frost. I was like, come on, come on. And then I realized I was running out of time. I threw it in shotgun and said, hey, you're sitting next to me in case I need you again. See, I wasn't doing all that. I'm just going to let the, you know, the warm <laughs> the air do its job. <laughs> It took forever. By the time my car was actually warm, like really warm, I was already here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Adam. And now it's time for our trending topics of the day. First up, science has spoken, and now we know who the most handsome man <laughs> in the world is. It's Bridgerton heartthrob Reggae Jean Page. The list was compiled using computerized mapping techniques based on the golden ratio, which focuses on symmetry and proportions of the face. Page scored a whopping 93.65%, but following close behind behind Chris Hemsworth at 93.5%, Michael B. Jordan at 93.46%, and Harry Styles at 92.3%. <laughs> It's all so, right, guys. There's always next year. I was going to say. Don't say, worry. I'm put you in there. No, I was going to say you. Oh, stop. Yeah, yeah you kidders. Oh, my guys. Are, you guys are a bunch of goofballs. Oh, oh, no, you, you know, you always whip out this thinking. random Wisconsin accent. I know. I, I just sometimes just whip it out, you know. Sometimes you just whip out the Wisconsin accent. But even though I don't have, I'm not from Wisconsin, right. but it just comes no out sometimes. People at home who are from Wisconsin probably appreciate your Oh, yeah, you betcha. Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> But yeah, though I saw that and I thought, man, that's interesting. They're doing it all based off of math and science yeah. and stuff. But uh, symmetry, the symmetry. But it's like, what about the personality, though? Ooh, the real key. Point. What matters Throw most? That into the mix. You know, just because you're really handsome. Doesn't mean you're nice. <laughs> I bet you these guys are actually really nice guys. Well, as I say, you watch Bridgerton, so I do. It's a good show. It's a good show, and I I would cast my vote for Reggae Jean Paul too. You're so probably, <laughs> no surprises there. Right. I got that guy. I think on the flip side, a few years ago for the women, I think it was Kate Middleton somewhere up there. So I know they do it for the women too, using that science method. So we'll see. Hey, hey it's as much as it's about up here. It's about what's in here as well. Very true, Adam. Yeah, that's what the Wizard of Oz taught us, right? It's all about the heart. <laughs> if only I had <laughs> Don't even was it was, was it? Oh, well, I was going to say going home, but yeah, you got the, the tin the one there. <laughs> Would you pay $150 for a cup of coffee? Sometimes coffee does seem like it's that expensive at times, but that's a lot, really. That's how much a coffee shop in Portland, Oregon mm. is charging. The coffee is an 
award-winning brew from Panama called Black Jaguar Geisha. Mm. That's a cool name. And recently won first place in the 2022 Best of Panama competition, <laughs> one of the most prestigious coffees, coffee competitions on the planet. Proud Mary Coffee Roasters paid $2,000 for one pound of it. And come February 6th, it'll sell just at 22 cups at 150 bucks a piece. Yikes. You know, there are people who love their coffee and are obsessed with <laughs> coffee. I, I mean, we kind of need it to survive. I would say it's more of a, a, a necessity than a, really a, an accessory or something that's like, I love my coffee. I, I more need it for me. I mean, to wake up in the morning, 150 bucks, come on. That's Ooh. a hole in your wallet. That's a big hole. You know, sometimes you hear people complain, oh, you're spending too much on Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. And I mean, that's got nothing compared to that. 150 say, bucks no. a cup? That's the first question our producer Caitlin asked me this morning, and now I realize why she was asking me that. But being on the morning show, you learn not to be picky with coffee. You take the coffee that's closest to you. From a hundred is brewed. <laughs> from a dollar fifty all the way to a whatever they throw at you. You know, I'll take what I can get. Got to get the caffeine in you somehow. Well, I have to appreciate Duncan over next door. Sometimes gives us donuts <laughs> too. Do. So yeah, it's it's so convenient to be right there. You Absolutely. just open up the door. You're there in less than two seconds. <laughs> Drive throughs right there. Right, right, yeah. Alrighty, well, in our final trend, as you watch us on The Morning Show, the results for the top streaming TV show and movie of 2022 are in, according to the Nielsen Rating Service. And the service says Stranger Things was the most streamed TV show, no nope, surprise, at least in the U.S. last year. Viewers streamed 52 billion minutes of the sci-fi show, led by its fourth season. And then meanwhile, Encanto was the most streamed movie of the year. Nielsen says Americans streamed over 19 and a half million years of content last wow. year. Not hours. Not hours or minutes. That's years. Crazy. years. That's the pandemic for you. You know, uh, Stranger Things, people were looking forward to that because Very it finally much. came out after the pandemic. And we were all kind of wondering what's going to happen. You know, we're gonna, we want, we've got these characters we got to see. we got to find out. <laughs> Spoilers for those at home. Maybe want to cut your ears. Don't say Don't. It. Yeah, don't. I don't, wouldn't. You're going to get some hate mail there if you say anything right now. <laughs> you better quit. But you wanted to find out what happened from last season yeah, to this season there. I'll say it at that. Anyway, and it's been a couple years, so people were excited about that. I was too. It took me a minute, but I was excited. I finally watched it a little late. I watch everything late. But Encanto, I remember when that came out and then it came to Disney Plus, and I loved that movie. I think it was really well done, really well made. The songs are infectious. And the culture was so well done in the movie too. Right, so. and the cast was great too as well. I mean, plenty of music. I mean, there are times I just will randomly start thinking about about uh, somebody we don't talk about. Uh, that song, you know, we don't <laughs> talk about a certain somebody. I uh, have no uh, idea. you never seen the movie? Never seen I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh, it's a good movie. If you like Disney movies, it's a good Disney movie. Don't spoil that one either. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, still to come here on The Morning Show, we are kicking off Champaign County Area Restaurant Week. I hope you're excited because we're going to sit down with Visit Champaign County to see what the week has in store for our local restaurants.
victory over violence. Live from your local news leader, Karina Rubio, Matthew White, and Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Adam Sharinsky. You're watching The Morning Show at 9 on WCIA 3. Welcome back, Central Illinois. Hopefully you haven't eaten yet today because we are kicking off the 7th Annual Champaign County Area Restaurant Week. It's a nine-day celebration, if you don't know, that features Champaign County's diverse and award-winning culinary arts. So we're going to head to the kitchen with Karina Rubio in just a bit. But firstly, Terry Reefsteck joins us now from Visit Champaign County, who is she's also the VP of Marketing and Community Engagement. We are so glad that you're with us, Ms. Terry. because Thank you for having me. We know just how important our businesses are, but of course our local restaurants, they mm -hmm. feed our community as well as our stomachs. So talk about the importance of the week. Yeah, so our local restaurant cuisine here is so different and special given the size of our community. We have restaurants that represent cuisines from all over the world. And um, this is an opportunity to really go out and try those restaurants uh, for the first time and maybe discover something that you've never tried before. Um, but it's also a great opportunity to showcase the love to our hospitality staff that helps uh, keep our community interesting and vibrant. So a really important week for our local economy and for the people who work in those jobs. Absolutely. And we want to talk about two visit Champaign County, how in your role, you get to show the beauty of Champaign County yes. and all of the things that are wonderful about what our guests can enjoy when they visit. So talk about the beauty of just being able to see the color that's in our community too. Yeah, I one of the things that I love talking about is the people in this community that yes. make it special. And that really is what is unique about our community. We have people from all over the world here that are doing unique and interesting and different things. And you'll talk to Ryan here shortly about the great things that he's doing. Um, but it is such a joy to talk to these people, understand what they're doing and why they're doing it in this community. And it's because um, the Champaign-Urbana area is very supportive of our local businesses and really wants to keep these unique and interesting things here. And things like Restaurant Week and all of the events that happen year round are great spotlights on this community and the people that make it special. Alrighty, and so I'm sure people at home are itching to get to the kitchen, but of yes. course I did want to ask you, what are you <laughs> most excited about for this week to try? Well, it's so hard to pick because <laughs> exactly. there's so many different ones, but um, right after this, I'm going to stop by Crack to pick up my egg sandwich to start the day. <laughs> I have dinner plans later tonight and then hitting up someplace different every single day this week, trying a lot of different cuisines, um, you know, from spring rolls to <laughs> Vietnamese cuisine to Cambodian to steak. So a little bit of everything. Absolutely. And my last question for you, Ms. Terry, before we get to the food. Yes. Of course, for any restaurant owners who are at home watching this right now who want to get involved or be recognized, how can yep. they go about doing that? Yeah, you can just contact me. You can go to our website at Visit Champaign County and you'll find my name on there. Just shoot me an email and I would love to sit down with you and talk how we can help showcase your restaurant. And there is an Instagram contest too, right? Yes. No? Okay. Use hashtag CC Restaurant Week while you're out this next week and you can be entered to win a hundred dollar gift card to a participating restaurant of your choice. All righty, all the enticing incentives yep. for us, Ms. Terry. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. And of course, now we get to send it over to Karina, who has the fun part in the kitchen with the food. And she's with one of our chefs participating this week. Karina, what can you tell us with our Ryan? Yeah, Matthew, we can't talk about restaurant week without talking to the people who make it happen in the kitchen. So we have Chef Ryan Rogers. Thanks so much for being here this morning. My pleasure. Thank you. Of course. And you have two restaurants, Homegrown and The Wheelhouse. So yep. before we dive into what's happening this week, tell us about your two businesses. So we feature local foods. We work with about 70 local farms that are all right here in central Illinois. So all of our menus are, are based on that. Um, I brought some of our featured stuff here today, but uh, our restaurant, my wife calls it comfort food with my little twist on it. So uh, featured local products, but um, very approachable cuisine. And so. would you say there's like a distinction between the homegrown and the wheelhouse? And can you also tell us where they are? Uh, so the wheelhouse is in St. Joe. We've been open around six years now. Uh, and then homegrown, we're coming up on our one year anniversary on February 1st. Congratulations. Same cuisine at both places, but I keep the dishes a little bit different at both places. All right. And so let's focus more on what people can expect if they walk into either of your businesses for restaurant week. So for restaurant week, we are actually featuring at both places. Uh, you get a three course menu for $32. So uh, choice of appetizer, entree and dessert. And then we have some featured wines to accompany the lovely meal. Um, but yeah, a three course meal for $32, is a pretty good deal. And so what got you passionate and in, into cooking in the first place? Oh, I actually saw a picture the other day of me making an <laughs> apple pie with my grandmother oh, really? um, when I was a little kid. So it, it happened a long time ago and then couldn't figure out what I wanted to do. So ended up cooking and fell in love with it. Friends in the family there. Then. Yeah. 
All right, and is this your first time participating in Champaign County Area Restaurant Week? No, we. I think this is our fourth year. Oh, awesome. um, so even during the pandemic, we did to go and, and all kinds of fun stuff. So, and so we're happy to welcome people back in now. Of course, and so with that said, what do you love about getting to participate in this great event that benefits so many businesses and the community? Uh, well, people can come out and get a great meal, but we see so many people that haven't been to our restaurant before. And, you know, we've been around a long time now, but people still haven't been in. So it, it's great to bring new people in and showcase our food. And, and usually January is a slow time of year, so this is perfect to get everything ramped back up for Valentine's Day. And so let's talk about the ingredients we have here. Would all of these be combined into one dish or separately? Several different dishes. All so right. these are oyster mushrooms. Uh, that goes into our risotto. We have some pea tendrils that go on top, uh, some roasted beets that go into a salad, and then we have our roasted chicken that'll get a mixture of vegetables. A uh, couple different wines we're featuring. Frank Family actually has ties to the University of Illinois. So we feature that one. And then this is just a wonderful white from Italy that pairs with it. So on our menus, you'll actually see all of the entrees and then I do wine pairings with them just to match perfectly with the food. Fantastic. And you were mentioning something kind of cool that you're gonna be picking back up again that people might remember from the pandemic. Yeah. So. Uh, Think of HelloFresh, but using local ingredients. So you can order through our website um, or through our Facebook page. We'll be announcing that over the next couple weeks. And then you can cook along with me uh, on our YouTube channel. Learning from the professionals then. Yeah. Last question for you. What other businesses are you planning to check out, if any, during Restaurant Week? I'm not sure I'll be able to get out of <laughs> either of the restaurants during Restaurant Week. Is he making week. you food then? That's right. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for yeah. being here. We really appreciate it. Make sure you get out there and support those businesses. This is Adam as your forecast up next.
Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Adam Zarinsky. And welcome back. Let's take a look outside of Decatur, and you'll see that we have not much happening right now in town. It's pretty quiet, a little bit of snow on the roofs out there, but notice that in Macon County, going to Piatt and DeWitt County, we've got a little bit of snow moving right on in. And a few spots here of some spotty snow showers, so don't be surprised by that if you see that for this morning. It might be a little bit of an impact, but overall amounts going to be less than half an inch for much of the area. We're going to see gusts up to 30 plus miles per hour here as we progress through the day and into tonight as well. Cold to start this morning. We saw temperatures in the teens and 20s. Now getting into the 30s and we'll see 40s in some spots later on today. I think we'll stay just below that here in Champaign. Few slick spots out there, possible too. So keep that in mind with the snow falling and some refreezing from last night. It might see a few patches that are a little bit harder, especially in our northern counties here to traverse. 27 in Champaign and in Danville, 29 in Decatur, 32 at freezing there in Taylorville, 33 in Effingham. So above freezing, we're starting to warm things up here across the area very slowly but surely. And I'm sure we'll get past that freezing mark here in Champaign and northward once we progress into the later day, uh, parts of the day. Still that southerly wind is the reason why we're going to see the warm up despite the cloud cover here, but it's giving us the cold wind chills for right now. Winds right now at 23 miles an hour there in Champaign. That's just the regular winds. If you count the gusts, it's probably up to 30, close to 30 miles per hour here. We're picking up winds across the region though. That's surging in a bit more of that warm air from the south. Now, here are the wind gusts for the forecast here. You'll notice that we have getting close to 40, 30 to 40 miles per hour here in some spots for today. They'll die down by t t uh, tonight. Then we go to tomorrow at 730 with our next storm system to come this way. That'll bring in some more warm, warm air ahead of it. And then we'll start to see a reversal. Winds become more northerly. Temperatures become much colder here. We'll get to the cold temperatures here in just a second. Let's talk about future tracks. Uh, temp or, uh, 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 graph here. You'll see that we have right now that we've got a little bit more of the rain moving on in by 330 today. The snow converting over to some raindrops here across the region. We're clearing out by later on tonight briefly. Then more cloud cover for tomorrow. Might even see some snow up to the north, but most of that snow expected to stay just north of Pontiac and Watsika, closer to Chicago for the day. We get to the afternoon hours here. We start to see rain wintry mix and even a little bit of snowfall out there on the back side of that. We're going the opposite direction, going from snow to rain today uh, to rain back to snow as we go into tomorrow morning. By the afternoon hours, we're drying things out here, but still cold across central Illinois. So 39 degrees, snow, rain, and some wintry mix out there. Might even see some brief freezing rain, but it shouldn't be impactful here. Tonight, 27, precipitation ends. Clouds start to break apart here. 44, we'll start to see the rain, snow, to wintry mix. So we'll see the rain at first, then wintry mix, then some freezing rain potential out there. That could bring in some slick spots. And then we're going to see some snow on the back side of that. So here's the weekend forecast 44 to 33 degrees here for today or for the, the weekend. Saturday into Sunday, again, plenty of chances of precipitation. By Sunday afternoon, we're drying out yet again here. So we're seeing a low pressure system come through here. A wet weekend overall in terms of precipitation. Might see a few chances here or there as we go into the middle of the new work week, but a lot of that activity looking to stay down to the south here. Future track showing temperatures warmed up there throughout the day on Saturday and then cooling back down as we go into next week. Temperatures 6 a.m. on Tuesday, only 11 in Champaign, negative four as you go into Peru getting colder for the week. So high temperature is not very warm over the next seven days. We're cooling things down once we get past Saturday and staying in the 20s here. A bit more typical for January and looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook going into February, a bit closer to where we should be for this time of year in some spots and a little bit colder than that, making up for what we had overall a warm January here in central Illinois. So temperatures in the 20s and seven day forecast might even see some peaks of sunshine here Monday, Tuesday into Thursday and smaller chances for precipitation here as well. Don't go anywhere. We've got plenty of more news and more things to talk about. We'll be back in just a bit.
This is The Morning Show. Well, the FDA says there's too many unknowns about CBD products to regulate them as food or supplements, but that could change in the future. So WCI3's Chance Stickland will explain how the new regulations would affect our businesses. It's definitely something to think about. That's Taylor Jones, manager at Five Star Nutrition in Champaign. They sell CPD oil. Jones says an FDA decision on CPD won't change their business model, but they're curious to see how it all plays out. FDA Commissioner Dr. Janet Woodcock said this week there is not enough evidence about CPD to confirm it's safe to consume or use as a dietary supplement. Jones says his customers use it for many reasons. Are you taking it for like help with sleeping, body aches, or just overall relaxation? Jones says it only really started gaining popularity in the past five years. The FDA oversees it because it's the active ingredient in the prescription drug Epidiolex. It's used to treat two rare seizure disorders. Under current FDA regulations, a drug can't be added to food or sold as a dietary supplement if it hasn't been deemed safe. Jonah Rapino, a spokesperson for New Era, says he's open-minded to see what the FDA has to say. He says their decision will help determine the direction of the industry. And I think for the CBD only industry, I think that it's only going to be a benefit to them and to the consumers that there are people who are actually looking at how they're making this stuff. The FDA could decide to come down with new rules that require clear labels, limits on CBD levels, and a possible minimum purchase age. Jones says while his customers see the benefits, only time will tell if that expands to others. As time goes on, you're going to see overall like just different studies with it, you know, people using it more and more. Now, the FDA did say that regulations are needed for CBD products for our animals at home. Now, in other news, adjusting to help more families. Still to come on The Morning Show, we'll tell you about a food pantry's new hours to further help those in the community. Stay tuned for that and more. and interiors. 
You're watching your local news leader. This is The Morning Show on WCIA 3 News. Welcome back. The Salvation Army of Decatur is helping more families get food. That's right. They partnered with the University Extension SNAP Ed program to widen the access for working families. The food pantry used to open a couple days out of the week, 9 to 11 in the morning. But now they change the days and move those hours into the evening and during the weekends. Of course, many people were used to the old hours. However, we've gotten great feedback from families who say, wow, we're now able to come in the evenings and this is really beneficial to us. The Salvation Army Food Pantry will be open Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 5 to 7 p.m. and Saturdays, 8 to 10 a.m. They say families will still have other daytime options with other food pantries in the area. Also in Decatur, they're taking another step toward revitalizing the city. They're holding a lottery style drawing for homeowners to get up to $50,000 worth of repairs. So the economic and development team is using $1 million of ARPA money to cover the costs and over 500 people have already applied. This rehab program requires homeowners though to live in the house they're requesting the money for and stay in that house for three years afterward. It's all a part of Decatur's plan to renew the look of the city, but also help people save money, especially those low income households and people with disabilities. Uh, with power bills being so high, it's important that your house is insulated properly. And so we hope that we can, you know, lower um, power bills as well as, again, you know, uh, kind of maybe motivating folks to do things, you know, with their houses if they aren't available and access, can't access the funds. And so we've learned that the first grant recipient is Carl Lemming. He's going to get $50,000 towards his roof, plumbing, doors, and windows. All right, so to come on the morning show, two films that center around marriage are available for viewing this weekend. Make sure you stick, out, stick with us to find out which ones Chuck Kaplinski is reviewing. First. Now, the morning show from your local news leader. 
All right, well, you can hear those wedding bells in today's Friday Flicks. We're talking about two films that revolve around marriage. That's right. So, of course, here to review what's called You People and Maybe I Do is film critic Chuck Kaplinski. One with J-Lo, one with Eddie Murphy, right, Chuck? No. <laughs> shotgun no? wedding you're thinking about. You're thinking shotgun yeah. wedding. Okay. That's yeah, right. which uh, they would Oops. not show to me till Wrong. last night. And I said, well, if you're Lame. waiting that long, the heck with that. <laughs> we'll maybe talk about that one next week. But this one, yes, You People is with Eddie Mur That's Murphy, right. as well as Jonah Hill. And Jonah Hill is one of the co-writers of this film. You can find this one on Netflix starting today. There you see Jonah. He's 35. He just, he doesn't really know what he's doing with his life. He's a financial advisor. He's making good money, but he doesn't have anything like a relationship. And yeah, he knows that this is a gap in his, in, in his uh, existence and he needs to fix this. Well, in great um, movie meet cute tradition, he does meet someone who does change his life right there. Amaya, who you're going to see, played by a young actress named Lauren London. He gets into her car thinking it's an Uber, and wow, she's not happy because he's like, oh, I'm a black woman in a car, you think I'm an Uber? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, I just, you know, you, you kind of look like her. And he's like, yeah, I do look like her. So this is how they meet, and of course, as we know in movies, one thing leads to another. And before you know it, opposites attract and they are in love. <laughs> it gets to the point where, well, they get to that point where they've got to meet each other's parents. And this is where the trouble <laughs> begins. Uh, Hill's parents are played by David Duchovny and Julia Louise uh, Dreyfus, upper middle class folks. And Jonah makes the mistake of asking her parents, Eddie Murphy and Nina Long, to meet him at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles for their first meeting. These assumptions, of course, fly around all throughout the movie. And assumptions are a big part of the problem with this film. We assume that certain people act the way or will act or think the way they do based on appearance, based on background. And of course, we know that's not true. Oh, and there they are. Their big problem is, is that they overcompensate. They say they know how black people feel and really relate and they come off offensive in doing that. The movie has a lot of good things to say, a lot of important things to say. I just wish it had found a different way to say it. If you have seen Meet the Parents or Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, you know exactly where this movie is going. The structure is as traditional as what we're talking about is untraditional. But with this cast, you get some really good laughs along the way, and they make this material work for the most part. I would just have changed the last 15 minutes. So I'm on the fence about this one. Uh, needs to be heard. All the things in this film that are said need to be discussed. Just wish they'd gone about it in a little different way. But again, your mileage will vary. Very starts on Netflix today. All right, and what about Maybe I Do? Is that any better? Is it worse? Believe me, you don't. Okay, <laughs> you don't. Um, there is a reason why this film is not in theaters and is going straight to video on demand. And you're going to be stunned because when you see, see the people who are in this, this should be better. The, here you get this moron, Luke Bracey. He is going to <laughs> jump in front of all the women at this wedding to catch the bridal thing so that her, his girlfriend, Emma Roberts, doesn't catch it. Well, you know, this is a, now I got to ask you a question, Rick. If, if your boyfriend did that, what would you do? I'd throw the flowers at him. I'd cut him loose, right? Yeah. You're, you're done. Well, of course, that doesn't happen. They have big discussions about whether we should get married or not. And then you've got these folks, Richard Gere and Susan Sarandon. They are married, but not to each other, and they are having an affair. Mm. Well, you have another couple, too. William H. Macy and Diane Keaton. Oh. They're also married, but to the other people, and they're about oh. to have an affair. And guess what? Bracey and Roberts, they're the daughter and son of the couples. Mm. And guess what happens? Another big dinner. They all get together and chaos ensues. <gasps> I was watching this movie and I closed my eyes and I swear to God, I thought that I was listening to a high school play. All the dialogue comes off like this and every speech sounds like, whew, it was really hard to memorize this. Wow, I'm glad I got through it. And I'm stunned because, of course, <laughs> these performers know what they're doing. This Absolutely. is not their first rodeo. But this movie just lays there. It's one of those movies where you just keep waiting for it to get going, and it never does. So skip this one completely. Maybe they needed to put J-Lo in this one, then. <laughs> Couldn't have hurt. <laughs> Couldn't have hurt. All right. I would say a lot of the movies I've seen lately that do have those stack casts, I've been a little let down. Yeah. Yeah, it means that you've got to have a script. If the Very story's true. not there, it doesn't matter. That's All right. Point. Thanks.
It's a great day to learn about agriculture in central Illinois. And what better way to do so than with our Ag in the Classroom segment. With me now, Sarah Caper from the Champaign County Farm Bureau Foundation. Sarah, great to have you here again this morning. Last week, we were burning up with our Ag lesson. We were. We were popping some popcorn. Popping popcorn. <laughs> this week uh, looks a little different. I think we're doing some digestion. We are. We're doing digestion. And when I go into schools and talk about a monogastric versus a um, rumen, about rumen, um, rumination, excuse me, um, the kids are on, they don't understand what that is. So we are monogastric. We have one stomach. One stomach. That's cute. But um, a cow has four compartments to one stomach. Oh, interesting. And so the digestion is a little bit different. So what I like to show them is the process of digestion for a ruminant. Okay. So here we go. This is a good demonstration. So we've got all the parts. We've got all the parts. We're going to run through it. Now, remember, a cow chews and rechews things over mm. and over again. So we don't have time to go through all of the steps of rechewing, but we're going to kind of work our way through. So we have potato sticks over there. Okay. That simulates the food that a cow would eat hay, grasses, and things like that. So we have put those in this first bag labeled mouth. So, Jacob, would you take your fingers and just kind of break those down? Sure. We've also added some water. Um, the water is like saliva, mm -hmm. breaking those down into little pieces. Now, if you'll take this spoon, you'll notice that it's labeled esophagus. Okay. So unzip that mouth and um, use that esophagus. By the way, their esophagus, a cow's esophagus is bilateral. It can move things back or it can move things up. Because you know they chew Kind of like chill chewing. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So it is going to all go in here. We pretend that that is the esophagus. Get okay. as much in there as you can. You another? Okay. Mm -hmm. And in the room, and that's the largest compartment, and it's like a fermentation vat, okay? It holds all of that food. And also in there, there's liquids. So if you'll take a little bit of water, we okay. can leave that in there, and um, add that. The rumen has lots of water and liquid to help break down the food a little bit more, a little bit more. Now, the other thing, you can stop. The other thing it has is micro that help break down the food. So and there's some pop rocks. Pop rocks is where we're going to Uh-huh, we're going to use those as microbes. So okay. pour a few of those in, maybe about a tablespoon, but you can kind of guess. You know, yeah. when I cook, I eyeball, so that works out That's great. That's perfect. <laughs> so you can hear those popping in there. And that simulates, and you can work that through. Can you hear that? Mm -hmm. Can you hear that popping in there? I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right of the microphone yeah, there. it's breaking that food down even farther. Now, this is going to, this takes a little bit longer, but we're going to stop right there and we're okay. going to move on. So unzip that. Okay. And then it's going to move through from the rumen to something called the reticulum, which is the hardware stomach. Do I use so you can actually pour it in pour, there. Okay. It might be a little bit easier. And the reticulum is a strainer and it actually filters through chunks of food, but it also does something else really interesting. It's a hardware stomach because sometimes cows will eat nails and barbed wire and other things. Oh, so it yeah. filters through all of those things into another compartment called the omasum. And as it does, that omasum has a paper towel in it because it's absorbent. Now, if you'll take the reticulum, and you'll notice we've captured all of our solids in there. Yep. The reticulum would go into the abomasum. The abomasum. And the abomasum is very much like our stomach. It is um, a compartment with solids, but it also has a little bit of acid in it. Use that okay. sparkling water there. All right. And that acid will break things down even farther. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it works it through. So we've done the rumen, the reticulum, the omasum, and now the abomasum, breaking it down. And, of course, just like humans, there's a small intestine and a large intestine, both absorbent. And so, so this, would go would, into there. this would go into there. And the finished product, after it's absorbed, would be a solid here in the large intestine. And a solid, that would be manure. That would be manure. Yeah. You're right. And okay. even that has some um, pop rocks in it because it has microbes that break things down. Fascinating. It's really yeah. kind of cool, the, the hands-on lesson, mm -hmm. the mess there. You can see that graphic as well showing all those different compartments. Mm -hmm. i got to say real quick, you know, we have more mono rumen. Is that the term? We're monogastric. Monogastric. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a hollow leg too, so. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is a great lesson. Love it. A lot of fun. Kids are going to have a great time learning about it. If you want more on this lesson or any Ag in the Classroom lessons we've done, head to our website, wcia.com slash Ag in the Classroom. And we're out in the weather garden here real quick. Going to take a look at the forecast for today. Already starting to see some snow showers move into central Illinois here. And 
It's still pretty cold out here. I can confirm that here in the weather garden for some snowfall here. Uh, with some little pockets here and there of some snow, uh, light snow out there. So how is it going to impact your travel for the rest of the morning? Well, for the rest of the day even. Less than half an inch here in some totals, if any at all. It's going to be up to a dusting, really. Gusts up to 30 plus miles per hour, so could see some of that rocking back and forth in the car here, but shouldn't play a big role in how uh, cars move around. Watch out for slick spots out there. There's been a little bit of refreezing here in the Weather Garden alone. A patch of snow that melted and refroze. That's really what we've seen so far, and so it could bring some slick conditions out there as you're traveling on the roadways, but a lot of them have been pretty easy. Traffic's flowing here on Neal Street. Gusts up to 30 miles per hour, like I said, and then it's cold to start now, but we'll see temperatures in the 40s here later on today. 27 there as you go into Champaign. 34 above freezing there at Effingham, so once the precipitation starts to move that way, it'll start to turn warm. <clears throat> Not so much into uh, snow, but more so into the liquid variety here. Wind chills are still cold out here. It's really cold out here feeling. It feels colder than it really is out here in the weather garden for sure. <clears throat> 14 for there in Paris and the winds are starting to pick up too. That southerly flow is going to help kind of overcome what the sun's losing here. We don't have a lot of sunlight here. We do have sunshine with light, but we don't have a lot of sunshine. That's going to overcome that and bring us those temperatures. Uh, they're in the 40s later on today. We see a little bit more calmer wind gusts here and then they pick right back up ahead of our next system that comes through here. Uh, let's take a look at that. You'll see that we have later this afternoon the snow showers giving way to little spots of rain here or there. Then we'll see drier conditions as we go into tonight. And then moving forward, you'll see that tomorrow starts out dry with maybe some snow showers to the north. Then we'll see some rain, wintry mix, and maybe even some snow, snowfall moving through. Some of that spots of wintry mix might even see some spots of freezing drizzle. We'll have to watch out Saturday night going into Sunday morning as events are going on Sunday morning. So here's a quick look at the seven-day forecast, and you'll see it gets colder as we go to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week.